Welcome to the first episode in my series of making a contemporary sideboard buffet. Before I start talking about the construction of this piece, uh, I want to give you some background. I've been working with some clients in Virginia Beach uh, over much of the past year in refining the design, and now we're ready to start building. The design was done on computer-aided design uh, CAD, and you saw the rendering of what the piece will look like in the introductory photograph. Now, that piece is made with a cherry leg and stretcher system. The carcass is curly maple, and it actually is three boxes. The two end boxes have doors, curved front doors, and with a shelf inside each one, and the center section has three drawers. Now, the top, which is quilted maple, floats above the carcass on some uh, cross pieces that are connected to the leg system. Now, we're working on the sources for the wood. We'd like to use solid wood if possible. And I have found a source for curly maple, some very, very good curly maple. And I'm working with that company to uh, provide the, the material. Uh, as, if you know anything about how I work, normally I use wood that I cut on my own sawmill, but curly maple is so rare, it occurs in about 2% of the maple trees, and uh, it's just not something I've come across here in Virginia. But my source is in Pennsylvania, and I think we'll come up with some nice wood. Now the top uh, is quilted maple, and that comes from the big leaf maple tree out on the west coast, and that is extremely rare to get pieces the size that we need, but we think we've located a solid piece that will work. If that doesn't work, we'll, we always have the option of using veneer. Now, while we're trying to collect the woods, uh, I'm going to start working on the stretcher system and the, leg, the stretcher and leg system. The front stretcher is curved. They're curved according to this this uh, pattern that I printed off the computer, and I've taken that pattern and I've transferred it with carbon paper onto some medium density fiberboard. And you can see the curves of the pieces. Now this piece is large enough for me to make six of these ribs and mount them onto a base piece, and that'll give me a three inch high uh, form that I can then bend the cherry around. I'll use layers of cherry glued between each layers to make a bent lamination. I'll do that two times to make the two pieces of stretcher. To cut the ribs that I will then glue together to make the form, I'm going to use the bandsaw. And I've installed an auxiliary table, which is a much larger work surface for handling such a large piece of uh, of medium density fiberboard. Turn on my dust collection system. stationary edge sander is the perfect tool for smoothing off the uh, outside radius of this rip. ribs all cut out now. You can see how they'll stack together. 
And now I'm going to go ahead and glue these together using a little bit of uh, tight bond glue with a brush. Even though this is just a bending form, you can see it still takes a lot of clamps to put it together to get the glue joints uh, to be nice and sound. Believe it or not, if this was a finished uh, product I was making, I'd be using more clamps than this. Now I've got the six layers of the form glued up. You, s you can maybe see that there's a lot of glue squeeze out here. Uh, I'm going to first of all take a scraper and go ahead and scrape that off because my next step is to go to the edge sander and uh, smooth up this uh, edge. I don't want the glue clogging up the sandpaper on the, the edge belt sander. Also while I'm at it you may notice that uh, this piece is clamped up between dogs in my bench. Uh, for all of you who are woodworkers who don't have a bench, a good bench like this, I encourage you to go ahead and get one. Uh, I designed and made this in 1980. It's served me well for 30 years. Uh, you can't do without a good bench. Now I've got the high spots uh, taken off and it's nice and smooth. Uh, the convex uh, side of the form uh, using my uh, oscillating edge sander. And now I'm going to take the high spots off the concave surface so there's a good place for the clamps to uh, seat. For that I'll use my oscillating spindle sander with a uh, dust extractor attached, which is essentially a vacuum cleaner. And I can just take my form and run it along the table against the oscillating uh, spinning drum and that will, uh, that will clean up the high spots. Now I've <coughs> clamped the form to the uh, base. The base will be uh, something I can clamp to the bench and I'll show you later how that works. And I've uh, glued that up and we'll let that dry. One thing you need to know about medium density fiberboard is that it's really made up of uh, paper fibers, more or less wood fibers, but more like paper glued together. So it's not especially the strongest material. So I've driven some nails from the top and the bottom periodically just to give a little more mechanical strength for when I clamp up the laminates and bend them around this form. I'm going to be gluing the laminates together using this as a form but the glue is going to squeeze out of the joints and if it gets into the medium density fiber board when I'm all done I'll have a nice uh, glued up laminated stretchers attached firmly to a form and I won't be able to get them apart. So I'm going to take some clear packing tape and go ahead and cover all the surfaces that will be in contact with the uh, actual wood that is being uh, glued together uh, into the laminate and uh, this tape will prevent the uh, glue from sticking to the form. The bending form is completed. I've covered it with clear uh, packing tape so glue won't stick. Now this is only half the form. This is just the inside of the bend. We still have to be able to clamp the outside and so to, to do that I've cut strips of masonite and coated the first strip with, uh, with the tape so that the masonite can be on the outside of the laminate stack that we're going to bend and to distribute the pressure of the clamps evenly, I've cut a total of eight more uh, strips of masonite, which forms up a package here that's about an inch thick that distributes the clamping pressure nice and evenly across the entire laminate face. In order to 
distribute the pressure even better in the vertical direction, I've taken a piece of masonite and I've glued blocks of wood to it so that the entire package will look like this. It will clamp around the form and distribute the pressure nice and evenly so that all the layers of laminate uh, are bonded uh, very well with very thin glue lines.